Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks for the hearing today. Um, one of the things that I miss about not being chairman of the committee <laughs> is, you know, before you'd get to sit and you'd listen to all this great stuff, and now I'm like everybody else. I come airdropping in right at the end when everyone's trying to wrap up. I get the gavel again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so thank you for that, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> but these are these are issues when it when it comes to. Uh, to nuclear, um, particularly the advances that we're seeing, um, advanced nuclear reactors, small modular. We just got uh, <clears throat> an announcement a couple weeks ago now that uh, at Eielson Air Force Base, the Department of Defense will be hosting the first pilot uh, of a micro reactor there. Wow. Um, really excited to see the application there uh, and what it can mean for us in in remote areas, uh, not only on military installations, but greater um, application elsewhere. So, um, love the topic. So, I, uh, I, I mention my excitement, but one of the things that um, I had been focused on, certainly in, uh, in years previous to this, is as we think about these advanced reactors, we need advanced fuel. And so we talk about HALU, high assay, low enriched uranium. Of the 10 reactor designs selected for the advanced reactor demonstration program, nine use HALO. So I've, I've tried to focus on this as a, as a uh, supply chain issue and, and raising, the, uh, raising the concern. My understanding is that uh, today, HALU is only commercially available from Russia. So I'd like to have a little bit of a discussion here this morning, since everybody else is gone and I've got the gavel here. Um, what do we do? Do you all agree that we need to develop domestic supply here to produce HALO? I, I, I would hope that we think that that's preferable to reliance on foreign uh, sources? And if so, really, what's our biggest obstacle here? Um, is this primarily an economic uh, and market issue? Is it a public policy problem? Um, what, do, what do you think we can do to build up um, this as, as the, the fuel source, if you will, and, and what more we might want to do on the infrastructure side? So let's start with you. Uh, Dr. Bragg Stilton. Thank you, Senator Murkowski. Uh, you, you've kind of hit the nail on the head on one of our challenges to these advanced reactors. With regard to high assay, low enriched uranium, we have different pathways to get there. We know how to do it. This is something that we can do at our national laboratories and work with, working with our fuel fabricators here in the United States, and it is essential that we have a domestic supply of this resource. And it provides us the opportunity to build these advanced reactors that can be put in smaller packages and operate more efficiently. So what do we need to do to make sure that we have that resource available? We need to make sure we put the investment in to establish that supply chain. Why haven't we done that before? Well, the demand wasn't necessarily there from the commercial sector previously. And now that we see this very large interest growing in the private sector to develop and deploy these technologies, now we're beginning to have that demand for this resource, for HALU, and we need to put the investment in to develop the capability to fabricate those. So it's really fuels. just been a chicken and an egg type of a thing, you know. Um, in my opinion, yes, frankly, that is a part of it, is until the demand's there, the supply chain won't be there. Yeah. We know how to do it. We know how to get there. But we need to invest in it to make sure that we can have that resource available. Okay. Others to this point? Uh, I, would, I would just add that, just to concur, that this is not – amazing new technology. We, we absolutely know how to do this. It's just the, the market isn't there, and so the supply isn't there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, last year um, we established a program within DOE to support the domestic availability mm -hmm. of HALU. Can anyone give me an update on the, on the current status of that program? Has the department been active in standing it up and, and getting it going? Yes, the, the program has stood up. That's actually led out of my laboratory by okay. a colleague of mine, and that has been moving forward. But again, we, we need to have that continued investment to, to move those processes forward, whether that is 
producing HALU from existing materials or enriching materials uh, down the line. But yes, things are moving forward, but we need more investment. Okay. One last question, and, and we're certainly hearing this in Alaska. I mentioned the, uh, the, uh, the, the micro reactor that will be um, uh, deployed up in the interior part of the state. But I think educating and informing public about the reality of modern, advanced nuclear system still remains a challenge. I think for so many, um, particularly in a state like Alaska, where we, where we just don't have any nuclear power to speak of, so many still envision Three Mile Island. They think of Chernor uh, Chernobyl when they think of, of nuclear, even though the small modular and the micro reactors are really a world apart in terms of, of safe operations. So uh, I know that you all are focused on, <coughs> on the, the technology, the research, the deployment, but I think we also recognize that um, we've got to do more when it comes to educating people that this nuclear is not just about clean energy, but it's also safe technology. How do we, how do we make this, this transition? We're doing it on the technology side, we're transitioning, but are we doing it in, in kind of the, in the, in the public mindset and what more can we be doing there? Well, and I throw that out to any of you. If, if I could just chime in, I can give you a good example. At our Cook Nuclear Plant on Lake Michigan, the community there is the strongest supporters of the Cook plant possible. And that occurs because the management of that plant invites people in uh, to come into the plant, to tour the plant, to see what's there. It explains the technology. We have a visitor center that has models where we go in and, and we, we bring in school kids and we explain to them, here's how the plant works. And when people understand what something is, then they're no longer afraid of it. And when we start talking about these advanced designs that particularly the inherently safe designs where you can walk away from the facility at 100% power and physics and the nature, of, because it's a smaller size and a higher power to surface area ratio, the thing just naturally cools down and shuts itself down. And, and when you start explaining those things to people and they get that understanding, then I think the fear level drops. Now, that, that's no small feat to help them understand it. And, and you do it almost one community at a time. But I, I think certainly the story is an excellent one. And it's just a matter of, uh, to your point, it's just a matter of education. We do have to get the word out. And, and Senator Mikowski, I, I would say from a medical isotope perspective, uh, it's very similar. It's not community, now it's patient by patient. Um, so uh, there is trepidation by patients when they walk into a nuclear medicine department. Uh, you know, they see a radiation sign and, and um, you know, they, they, some will freak out. But educating, um, educating patients that we're talking about a very low level of activity, they're very short-lived, the half-lives of the isotopes that we use in, in healthcare are, are very short. Um, they're excreted from the body uh, efficiently. And again, patient by patient, and with uh, some of the uh, educational efforts uh, that are being done, not only by industry, but by the uh, Society of Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging, uh, I think we're making some efforts. And with some of the new uh, therapies, for example, uh, Senator Barrasso uh, asked about these a little bit er earlier, the uh, 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 targeted alpha therapies, for example, that use uh, isotopes like actinium. Uh, uh, we continue to make inroads, uh, especially when they are so efficacious and help patients. Good. Well, thank you. Well, and as I have indicated my interest, voila, everybody else shows up. Here we so are. I'm going to turn the gavel back. Everybody wants